How's it going and welcome back to their Pokemon Unite highlight here on YouTube. Yesterday, in case you missed it, the Hoaglandia Open Series expanded into Pokemon Unite for the first time. It was an awesome tournament with 30 different teams competing that was fantastic to cast. Yesterday's highlight, if you didn't watch it, is a highlight of the finals of that tournament. And if you haven't commented on that video yet, you should do so. Wednesday, I'm going to pick five random commenters from that video to give a 3,000 Aos Gems gift code for for North American Switch shooters. So if you want a chance to get some free stuff in Pokemon Unite, courtesy of the Pokemon Company, be sure to drop a comment on that video from yesterday. Today's video is another match highlight from the tournament. There are a lot of great, interesting matches from it, but I think the one that we have today shows the most interesting and unique team compositions from the teams that we have to see. And I think there was really highlight some Pokemon well that we don't normally see seeing play in competitive Pokemon Unite. So at any rate, I hope you enjoy this match highlight with commentary from myself as well as my co-commentator Spraggles, who you can find linked in the video description down below if you want to see some more of his excellent content here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another highlight video here on YouTube. So the Ooh. evolution points that they have, they're, they're huge changes in how strong the Pokemon are. So a three evolution Pokemon at points in the game can be pretty far behind. Okay, Spraggles, I don't want you, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there is a Machamp on Red Love's team here. You should have just told me to <laughs> shut up. I can't wait for you. Ooh, and it's not just a lane Machamp. We are jungle Machamping here. And these players did win their first round. They are one and oh in this tournament. We have a jungle Machamp. We have a Charmander from Red Love in the bottom lane. I mean, life is pretty good right now, Jeff. This is really great to see. Yep, and we see, you know, Lucario's doing Lucario things up top. We're gonna largely focus on our bottom lane here because that's where more of the action's gonna happen early. We see our teams contesting these pieces of center farm. And this is, this is something here I would like to point out that I think a lot of newer players aren't aware of. So when you are doing this triple lane, you notice these players, they left three monkeys in their lane before going to contest the contested dinos. And this is, this is twofold for this reason. The first is this lets you get to lane faster to give you a chance to get that contested farm against the opposing team sooner. And the second is it lets you control who gets the lane monkey experience after you see how the contested farm plays out. Yeah, it's uh, it's so important to be at that fight early. And wow, they wow. just completely every, love that. Every B is claimed by Red Love's team here, the tire on the, on the right side. Really strong moves. We saw Machamp up in that lane. I mean, Machamp clears actually really well with that karate chop. So yeah, super solid moves there from Red Love's team from Tyre. And this fight is really interesting because we see, you know, it's really hard to secure farm with Charmander compared to some of the other Pokemon who might have, you know, better CC or something like that. But we do see Charmeleon coming into this bottom lane. So I wonder how this is going to stack up. I would say that the bottom lane from the other team is a little more solid, but actually neither team has one of the super strong CCers like Pikachu or nine tails. Yeah, and so uh, something that's actually worth noting here, I was so excited by the Machamp on the right side of our screen that I actually didn't notice until just now that there are actually no Eldegoss for our team on the left side here. They are playing Blissey as their bottom lane support, which is an interesting choice. It is interesting. I mean, Blissey combos so well with Cinderace that yep. you all you always wonder if the two could pair together. And it also works great for someone like Venusaur, who's constantly auto attacking. And ooh, we have a big fight right we have here. A They're gonna jungle the invasion Cinder. here and kill the Cinder before it does the buff. This is huge. So not only did we get experience from killing the jungler, but we also took one of the buffs from the blue team, putting our red team incredibly far ahead for this endgame fight if they can get out, which they do. And that entire time that the purple team was having to deal with that, the orange team right there was able to take those center Bs. So that was a huge win for Tyre right there. Yeah, definitely. And we see, you know, we saw the Charmander back off here, feeding this farm to the Machamp choke so it can try to get to Machamp. However, the left side team, they are ripping this objective. This yeah. is the big upside to having a Blissey on your team versus an Eldegoss is Blissey's helping hand makes your team clear an objective like no other. Yeah, Cinder's burn on objectives, the, the rate at which he chips it down is just so incredibly fast. You pair that with Blissey's helping hand and it was gone before Tyre could even react. Yeah, really? Pay these rats. 
Yeah, really excellent macro gameplay from the blue side here. Recognize that they got a little bit behind with that jungle invasion, but then leaning into the strength that their team composition allows with the Blissey to rip that, rip that Dreadnought and catch back up. And now we have a level eight Cinder, nine Cinder. So we have Unite from Cinder, but we also have a level uh, nine Machamp. So Machamp is ready, Cinder is ready. We have a fight here over Rotom and we have two Unites available. You know, one of, I think, the the best changes they made to Unite was they, they reduced the amount of experience that the Dreadnought gives at one point. And we see that really coming into oh. play here where our blue team got the Dreadnought, but the red, the orange team here is not really down on down on experience. Yeah, the, the change to Dreadnought is pretty massive. We, do, we did see a Unite from both Cinder and Machamp, but it actually didn't seem to affect things Really, either way, we saw Machamp unfortunately miss its uh, its big punch there, and Cinder's uh, Cinder's Unite was not able to secure Rotom. So we have Dreadnought taken for uh, Carpe, and we have Rotom for Tyre. And you know, taking the Rotom in a spot like this, we're up a little bit of points on the orange team now, but we gave these side Dinos to the blue side, giving them more experience, which means these levels are close, but now the purple team's gonna be in a position to get ahead now because it has access to more experience than the orange team does. Yeah, that's right. It's a reason that some teams actually don't like to take those early goals is because you are opening up the enemy team to catching up to you in level or surpassing you with all those big chunks of experience. Yeah, so. definitely. I, I can't even tell you the number of games where like the opposing team captures a road time and the call for my team is just, no, just let it walk in. I want those yep. side dinos so our secondary non-jungler can scale up. And again, just positioning to rip this objective on the back of the back of this helping hand. Here we go. We've got a fight over Dread here. Both teams are at it. And just like you said, ooh, we got Unites coming down. Oh, Venusaur and Unite. Did we that see? That was ooh. huge. Wow, Char. I mean, Char. Char. Charizard what? just destroying that whole fight. We really, really seeing Red Love's team composition come together in that team fight there. Uh, wow, are we going to break this bottom point here too? I mean, we this are. Is, this is huge. Yep. This is huge. What a win for Tyre in that bottom lane. Like the question's gonna be, can all of them get out? And it's looking, it's looking like they might. Oh, Mimes may be trapped. Honestly, only losing one person is Lucario going down too. Mime is out. Wow. Oh, Lucario's is just harassing. Okay. Mime got out of there. Yeah, Lucario is just taking their jungle. Really, and this just... is this is kind of a disaster if you're on the blue team here. So you know the punish for them getting aggressive and breaking your second point like that should be that you were able to jump on them and get a couple of kills. But actually, everyone got out for our orange team. Yeah, that was that was just huge. And now look, they're they're Ooh, trying to and they the stole bottom. the Rotom. Yep. Wow! Wow! They're call the police. There's been a robbery. Jeez. You see, you see our, our purple team correctly kind of pulling back, letting the road time walk towards point. It'll be interesting to see, does the red team decide whether or not they want to push here? I so, feel like, you know, they could push. They're probably just going to eat yep, every like bit it. of experience on the map. So something to point out here, we're at the three minute point of the game. And this is very critical to watch team fights once you get past that 330 mark of the game, because those unite moves, those powerful move that every Pokemon gets, if you use that unite move after the three minute and 30 second mark, there is a good chance you're not going to have it back up again for that Zapdos fight at the end. Yeah, that's exactly right. There are only a few Pokemon that charge reliably fast enough where you can, you know, use your Unite after that 330 mark. You know, I mean, Talon is, is a yep. good example of someone who might still be able to do it. But so many Pokemon, if you're using your Unite, it had better be for the absolute best reason possible because you need it for that final Zap fight. We see Lucario doing what I refer to as Lucario things here, just diving straight into that back line, eating a Cinderace for breakfast, and then getting out completely for free with no punishment. You know, Jeff, you and I are cut from the same cloth because I also consider that to be Lucario doing Lucario things. That and is again, exactly as, as, we, as we head to this Zapdos fight with 10 seconds left, look at the levels on these teams. Our right side team has not only Machamp, but also Charizard at 14, Lucario's at 13, and there is one character above 12 on our left side. Wow. Okay. I mean, purple team is split here. They're Snorlax. I'm not sure what's happening yep. right now, but this is disastrous for the purple team. Yep. Our orange team, I will be very surprised if they don't clean this up while they are multiple to one here. Oh, I have to wonder what was happening with Snorlax right there. It was, it was so important for it to be at that fight. And because of that, we see an entire team KO basically. Yep. 
This okay, yep. and there's there's yep. the unite. So I would assume this Lucario is going to die, and we're going to melt this objective yep. with this unite. They're going to take Zap right now. I mean, it's maybe Cinder has a steal there's in a him Cinder right coming here. In. Yeah, and you see a, a great awareness here from Okay. Cinder Ace yep. is the one that can come in. Let's go yep. ahead and get them in here. Okay, we've got right, you. Machamp is low. Move there by that Blissey, really saving Cinder here. Yep, we see Machamp resetting here, which I think is very smart. Remember, our orange team does not need this bird. The little bit of attacks in the bird were just to pull that Cinder in, so it felt like it had to come in on its own. Oh, and we see the, uh, we see that Lucario there with 50 from Tyre. Just it, it could at any moment run into the center base, even if they're able to take. Yep. that uh, Zapdos for from and, and, and we've hit what I like to refer to as garbage time at this point where the game's basically been decided at this point even if our blue team manages to win a coin flip on the Zapdos they've died too many times they're not going to have a bunch of 50 point scores the other team's going to be able to back cap and I, I don't think there's a there's a route to return here for our for our purple team unfortunately not you know if they had all five teammates in the center like you said with enough points on them there might be something but yeah this is a gg higher extremely solid play i mean one when, when they had that full team ko in that bottom lane and and they crushed both of those goals this match was very very hard wow work. incredibly rude play from our charizard lucario and venusaur having a dance party if they want to and charizard's like there shall be no footloose here this afternoon yeah that no might dancing. be one of the the most mean plays we see all day <laughs> the tires without question the bad boys of pokemon unite uh, it looks a little bit different up top all right it looks like we've got Ooh. our players in the next round and we've had a bit of a comp change on one of the sides let's take a look at exactly what we have going on here let's take a look we have comp oh, changes on right. both sides speaking Whoa. of gardevoir this is really interesting so we have a gardevoir likely in the jungle celeste was our jungler on machamp last round and they've switched to blissey potentially for their own objective ripping potential Wow, this is this is really interesting. I I kind of love that there's been so much of a change here. One of my favorite Pokemon coming into this match, Sylveon. I love you, Sylveon jungle. jungle, and oh oh, this is interesting. So we're not only Sylveon Jungle, but we're going two one two on the left side now. This is so bizarre. I I love this. This is exciting. I I wonder now that we are seeing Sylveon in the jungle, is this going to be a mystical? fire sylveon or are we still going to run hyper voice i'm interested to see something else that's interesting to note here is that there is no healer on our left side team so game game one they have oh there's an experience share on the cinder ace yeah i'm so it's up here in this top lane and it looks like just to be supporting lucario basically so i'm guessing it's it wants to let lucario take as many last hits as possible so it can score and then from there, it's just going to use that experience share to sort of stay in line level wise. Really interesting strategy. It, we saw in the bottom lane there, obviously, you know, two against the tri lane. They were having some difficulty, but we do have Sylveon making their way bot now. Yes, yeah, so there's two different fights to watch here. So on the bottom, we have the jungler coming to support against the triple lane. And in the top, we have Cinder Ace and the Lucario versus the Lucario and the jungler. And it looks like bees did not go particularly well there. Cinder Ace still below level four. Yeah, yeah, this is not a great start here for the purple team. One thing that I find so interesting that uh, Tyre did is they won their last round a commanding victory and they changed what they were doing. So if the enemy planned on reacting to it, they said, no, you're, you're not going to know what we're doing here. We're going to come with a different strategy. I kind of love that. Cario in fading while the Sylveon buys time on the bottom here. So going to lose those really important jungle buffs that not only provide you with extra strength, but also an incredible amount of important experience. Yeah, I mean, that's just such a big play there. When you notice that the enemy jungler is in lane, as we can see, staying in lane right here, you have, it feels like it's your duty to take everything from them. I mean, th no one's there. No yeah, one's there. To wow, take it. just incredible curveball pivot here in terms of positioning, bringing the Venusaur up top, breaking this lane. I wonder if we're going to see uh, Tyre here just punt this Dreadnought and try and push this Rotom down to the home base eventually. 
It, we we absolutely could see that. I mean, when you lose that top goal early, I always feel like a great strategy is to actually switch your priority and go for that Rotom. It's just such a big advantage. But of course, the massive amount of experience early, it's probably the one time that Dreadnought matters most is this first Dreadnought. Yep, definitely. Because the amount the amount of experience it gives kind of falls off as the as the game goes on. Yeah, we've got uh, two for purple in the top lane, three for purple in the bottom, and it looks like oh, they actually had a good exchange there, top. Yeah, they, they are they are pivoting back around here. So Red Love's team did decide that agreeing with you that this first first dreadnought is very important, bringing everybody but their Ivasaur down here. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's also you know, especially when you have Guard of War, you yep. just go, we need experience, we need it bad. Yep. Nice moon blast. Uh, wow, I I actually thought they were gonna get that Wiggly right there. They might the, still do it. The top team does get the Rotom. And again, talking about how the Rotom would, does give less experience than it used to, something that's important to note here is that the purple team does have two sets of those side Dinos on each side, giving them potentially extra experience if they can secure it. Something I, I love watching of this Lucario here, OG was taken, was every time one of those uh, pieces of experience on the map have popped up and been open, the jungle, those Adinos right there, he is there instantly to capitalize on it, trying to steal it from the enemy team. It's really solid play. Seeing different play patterns too between the Lucarios, if you note here, this Lucario for Tyre is using the extreme speed mechanic to zoom past things and have a ton of mobility, while the Lucario for our left side team is power up punch. So that gives a little bit of resistance to CC and that allows it to get objective security. In. Yeah, it's interesting because in I actually kind of like the objective securing more from extreme speed just because power up punch is a one target move. If you stand in front of Lucario, it is not able to secure an objective, but extreme speed hits multiple uh, units. So extreme speed, actually, you can dash through an entire enemy team and still secure an objective. It's all personal preference. While I still love power up punch, for stealing objectives, I'm kind of an extreme speed man. So something I would really like to point out is, you know, we've talked we talked about Gardevoir in the first match, and there were some very what I will refer to as Twitch chatty comments about the quality of Gardevoir. And while Gardevoir isn't a top tier Pokemon by any means, this team on our right side here is doing things with its micro positioning that really allow you to leverage the strength of Gardevoir. You'll note in these team fights, this Gardevoir is never alone. There's a Venusaur glued to her side. There's a Blissey glued to her side. There's a Mime running along with her. When you have those other teammates that can body block for you or provide a little bit of crowd control, the damage output that Gardevoir can produce is obscene. Yeah, you know, when I, when I look at this team comp, I don't see anyone where I go, oh, we definitely want Blissey there. Uh, because when I think Blissey, I obviously think, how is it gonna benefit someone who does a lot of auto attacks? However, the positioning you get from Helping Hand, the mobility you get from it, will let you position that Gardevoir in incredibly good ways. So yeah, it's been it's been a really cool- uh, Oh no, I, I missed it. I think Gardevoir's Unite might have pulled Rotom into the goal there. Oh no, did it? I, yeah, because the, the Rotom went in while the Gardevoir was standing there, and Gardevoir had a buddy barrier. Look, there have been times where I have, as a Cramorant, surfed, surfed a it in, into yep. my, own, <laughs> my own goal. As a Talonflame, I have accidentally united something into my and own goal. And here's exactly what I'm talking about here. The, the Gardevoir was caught on its own for a second, and we saw Mime immediately have that macro awareness and come up and be like, Gardevoir cannot be left alone. She needs a babysitter so she can do her damage. It's a close game right now, 276 to 200. Looking at the levels here though, we can see that Tyre yep. is a bit ahead. Yep, and again, like the scoreboard is kind of a resource in a way when you think about this game. And even though the score is higher for the purple team, I would say the orange team is ahead in this position based on the levels on the teams. Yeah, and look at this, look at the chase potential here with that uh, helping hand, just able to chase Lucario down and the massive amount of range that Gardevoir has. It, it's, ooh, ooh. Ooh, this, this pincer from the from the Sylveon is kind of big. Again, Gardevoir is squishy. If you get hit from both sides, it's tough to keep everybody off you. 
Yeah. Uh, the nice thing is there's a lot of mobility here, and here comes that helping hand again, just able to let them reposition, and we have a big stun there. Oh, goodbye, yep. Sylveon. And, and helping hand, too. You know, we talked about how Gardevoir doesn't have any mobility. Blissey's helping hand gives you movement speed, again, mitigating one of the drawbacks of these Pokemon. And this is one of the things that's going to be more interesting as Unite continues to add, you know, two, three Pokemon a month. The team building depth how you're able to support these Pokemon that are bad on their own is going to increase in complexity in a really interesting way. Yeah, now we see, I mean, this Rotom is obviously such an important fight. You could burn a Dread in 10 seconds, but the Rotom right before Zap is big, 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 and we see Tyre really collapsing on it here. Yep. A lot of damage coming out, and they are able to secure it. Okay, and there's there's a kill. Are we, are we gonna get another one? There's another one. Wow, a double. Big. These death these death timers are low. I would bet we're gonna see Tyre go right down into the zap pit. Because now I, I on think the, they're on, gonna do it. Yep, on the purple side, they have to decide, okay, are we letting the Rotom go in? Or are we giving up the zap? And in this spot, I think they're supposed to let the Rotom walk, and they do. Yeah, they do. And now we see that the wonderful moment here from Tyre is they're able to really do whatever they want here. They can start attacking Zap. They can peel off and fight them. They, they put themselves in such a great position for this final fight. Yep. Send their aces down while Gardevoir is still alive. Again, the mine just providing excellent support for this Gardevoir. Pushing yeah. off the person that normally would have killed it. Ooh. Oh, God, again, the, the save from the positioning on the mine. There's, there's a Sylveon chasing it down. Is this going to be the end of the road for our Gardevoir player finally? I don't know. Oh, oh an incredible no. moon blast. What amazing micro play for <laughs> our Gardevoir Luda player Polo here. with the final hit there? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been. Okay, and oh, we man. see our orange team turn this around. So they originally were down points here, but they won that team fight. And instead of choosing to flip the objective in the middle, they have instead chosen to back cap and get in here. Oh, wow. And look at this. That Venusaur. Venusaur is just such a brutal monster. It's so hard to fight. Our Gardevoir resets and gets back. We pick up another kill. We are three to four in the middle while we are also up on points. Just an incredible spot. Look at wow. the Sylveon just get deleted by this Gardevoir. And the, the unfortunate thing is that Sylveon has Calm Mind and it just didn't it didn't have it activated at the right time because it would have tanked that Moon Blast so perfectly, but it couldn't do it. Yep. And we see, we see this just chasing around. We're just buying time at this point. We know we're up by over 100 points on the orange side of the board. We're just picking people out where we can and making sure they don't get back caps to catch back up. Yeah, unfortunately for Carpe Diem's rats, they, they don't have a, a path to victory anymore. Uh, it's it's too far gone. I like the move by that Sylvie on there. If there was some way to get that score, maybe they could convince Tyre to kind of peel off and start zap or something but instead of going into zap they tried to find some positions to score in and it just wouldn't have been enough either way